Welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 7, Part 1, Respiratory Word Parts and Anatomy. I think you'll find that Chapter 7 is a lot more straightforward than Chapters 6 or 5. We don't have the complicated uh, physiology that we had in those chapters. This is more just straightforward learn the word parts, learn the anatomy, and then learn the pathologies and procedures. Okay, well let's get going then with the word parts and anatomy of the respiratory system. The purpose of the respiratory system is to bring oxygen from inhaled air into the blood, to expel waste carbon dioxide, and to produce airflow that makes speech possible. And when we're looking at the anatomy and word parts of the respiratory system, it's helpful to divide it into two major parts. We have the upper respiratory system, which is the nose, the mouth, the pharynx, the epiglottis, the larynx, and the trachea. And then we have the lower respiratory, which is the bronchi, or the bronchial tree, and the lungs themselves. First, let's look at the upper respiratory tract. The first word part I have for you is sinuso, S-I-N-U-S slash O. And sinuso refers to sinus, that's pretty easy, and a sinus is the air-filled cavity that is lined with mucous membrane. And there's several of them in the skull, and you refer to the textbook for the the particular uh, names of those. The next one is pharyngo, P-H-A-R-Y-N-G slash O, and pharyngo refers to the pharynx. And the pharynx is the medical term for what we commonly know as the throat. And looking at the anatomy here, the throat can be divided into three subparts. The first part is the nasopharynx, N-A-S-O-P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. And you'll notice it's composed of the word part naso, N-A-S slash O, and then the word pharynx. It's the portion that starts behind the nasal cavity and continues downward behind the mouth. So this is the uppermost part of the throat. It goes actually up above your mouth, up there where the nasal cavity starts, and then down to behind the mouth. The second part is the oropharynx, O-R-O-P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. And oro refers to mouth, and the oropharynx is the portion of the throat that is visible when looking into the mouth. And our textbook points out that the oropharynx is technically part of the respiratory system because air goes in and out of there, but also it's part of the digestive system because when you're eating, food goes into the oropharynx before it goes on into the rest of the digestive system. And finally, we have the laryngopharynx, L-A-R-Y-N-G-O-P-H-A-R-Y. NX. Laryngo is a word part that refers to the larynx or voice box. And again, we have the pharynx referring to throat. Well, this is the lower part of the throat. It goes down from the mouth to the openings of the esophagus and the trachea, right where they open. And the esophagus is a tube that goes down into the stomach. It's part of the digestive system. And the trachea is a tube that goes down towards the lungs. It's part of the respiratory system. So because the laryngopharynx feeds both these tubes, it is also considered part of respiratory and digestive systems. Okay, the next word part you should be familiar with from the last chapter, it's tonsillo, T-O-N-S-I-L-L slash O. That refers to tonsils. And the tonsils are technically lymphatic tissue. We we learned that in the last chapter. 
However, in this chapter, because the tonsils are in the throat, the textbook goes into more detail and shows you the different types of tonsils that are in the throat. And so you're going to want to look at the drawing there and get a handle on those different types of tonsils. The next word part is laryngo, L-A-R-Y-N-G slash O. And we just mentioned that a minute ago. Laryngo refers to the larynx, and this is the medical term for the voice box. And the voice box is a triangular area that's between the pharynx, which is the throat, and the trachea, which is the tube that goes down towards the lungs, and it contains the vocal cords. And of course, the vocal cords are what allow us to speak. The next word part is phono, P-H-O-N slash O, and that refers to the voice. And then we have the word part for the trachea, which is tracheo, T-R-A-C-H-E slash O. Again, that's pretty straightforward, trachea, tracheo. And the trachea is commonly known as the windpipe, and it is a tube or pipe that carries air to and from the lungs. Well, that is the upper respiratory tract. Now let's look at the lower respiratory tract. The first part of the lower respiratory tract is the bronchus, and there are two bronchuses, and the plural of bronchus is bronchi. And the bronchi is a division of the trachea. The trachea goes down and splits into two parts. It goes down into each lung. So when we talk about both of the bronchus, we've got bronchi, or a bronchus is just a single one. And the word part for these guys is, first of all, bronco, B-R-O-N-C-H slash O. That's pretty straightforward. But then there is an alternate one that is used in a few terms, but is probably less often used. You just have to watch out for this exception. And this one is spelled just slightly differently. It's bronchio, B-R-O-N-C-H-I slash O. Again, some terms prefer that one. But you're going to see bronco, I think, most of the time. Okay, so the bronchi which is the two bronchuses, okay, go down into the lungs. And the textbook shows us four word parts for lung. And yes, you will see these four word parts, although, again, some of them are more commonly used than others. I'm going to talk to you uh, about them probably in the order of commonality. Uh, the first one and most common one is pulmono. P-U-L-M-O-N slash O. We have a term pulmonary, which means relating to the lungs or respiratory system. So pulmono is the word part for lung. The next one is pneumono. P-N-E-U-M-O-N slash O. And then the next two are probably less commonly used. We have pneumo which is a shortened form of pneumono, and pneumo is P-N-E-U-M slash O. Notice there's no extra O-N in there. And then finally we have pulmo, P-U-L-M slash O. Okay, then we've got some related terms, and the first one is related to the chest. One of them is a combining form, and that's thoraco. T-H-O-R-A-C slash O. Thoraco is a combining form that refers to chest. And there's quite a few terms that use that word part. We also have a suffix thorax hyphen T-H-O-R-A-X. And that also refers to chest. And I believe that if you look at the way the terms are laid out in the chapter, you'll find that thorax, the suffix, tends to be used with pathologies. Like there would be a prefix that would, or a combining form, that would tell you about some disorder or something being wrong, and then the suffix thorax is tacked on to mean it's in the chest. And that's kind of an unusual way to form the words. And I believe thoraco 
the combining form is used more often with procedures. So that might kind of help you as far as usage. Okay, and the next one is pleuro, P-L-E-U-R slash O. Pleuro refers to the pleura, P-L-E-U-R-A. And what is the pleura? Well, the pleura is a membrane that covers the outer surface of the lungs and also lines the inner surface of the rib cage. And there's actually two pleura. There's the visceral pleura, V-I-S-C-E-R-A-L. And there's the parietal pleura, P-A-R-I-E-T-A-L, pleura. Now, the visceral pleura is the innermost pleura. The visceral refers to internal organs. So remember, visceral, inner, it is the inner layer of the pleura. The parietal pleura is the outer layer, the part that's lining the inside of the chest cavity. And in between the two pleura is an area called the pleural cavity. P-L-E-U-R-A-L, and then cavity, C-A-V-I-T-Y. It's also referred to as the pleural space. And this is an airtight space between the two pleura. And another related term is the mediastinum, M-E-D-I-A-S-T-I-N-U-M. This is a space in the chest between the lungs where the heart, esophagus, trachea, bronchi, thymus, and lymph nodes are located. And the last related term we have is a suffix. And this suffix is the suffix for breathing. And it has an odd spelling and pronunciation. It's hyphen P-N-E-A. Hyphen P-N-E-A is pronounced nea. The P is silent. And it means breathing. Now, there are all kinds of terms in the textbook that relate to breathing and breathing difficulties. And we're going to go over these terms later because their pronunciations can be tricky. First of all, how the words are stressed is tricky. And also, the P in some terms is pronounced. In other terms, it's not. It's silent. So that's something we're going to work on a little bit in another episode. Okay, but right now... We're going to go ahead and do some practice over these word parts and the anatomy that we've talked about. Okay, here we go. Number one, what is the word part that refers to voice? That is phono, P-H-O-N slash O. And what is the word part that refers to the voice box? Well, the medical term for voice box is the larynx, and the word part is laryngo, L-A-R-Y-N-G slash O. What is the word part that refers to the throat? The medical term for the throat is the pharynx, P-H-A-R-Y-N-X, and the word part is pharyngo, P-H-A-R-Y-N-G, slash-o. The section of the throat that is visible behind the mouth is known as the what? That's the oropharynx, O-R-O-P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. Remember, oro refers to mouth. The section of the throat that leads to the esophagus and the trachea is the what? That's a little tricky. Now we have to remember that the part we're talking about is the lower part. It's the third part. 
it is the part that is related to the larynx. It's right before the voice box. So this would be the laryngo pharynx. L A R Y N G O P H A R Y N X. Okay, and finally, what is the term for the section of the throat that begins behind the nasal cavity? Well, that's going to be the nasopharynx, N-A-S-O-P-H-A-R-Y-N-X. What is the term for the structure that's commonly known as the windpipe? Well, that's the trachea, T-R-A-C-H-E-A. And the word part's pretty straightforward on that. Do you remember what the word part is? Well, that's tracheo. T-R-A-C-H-E slash O. And what is the word part that refers to lung? Well, there's a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, again, the most common one is probably pulmono, P-U-L-M-O-N slash O. Then we have pneumono, P-N-E-U-M-O-N slash O. And you also could have said pneumo, P-N-E-U-M slash O, or pulmo, P-U-L-M slash O. Okay, what is the suffix that refers to breathing? Well, that's that little stubby odd one. It's nia, or you could be funny to remember the spelling and say punia, but it's really nia. Okay, and that's hyphen P-N-E-A. Refers to breathing. Okay, and what is the word part that refers to the plura? Well, that's pluro, P-L-E-U-R slash O. And what is the term for the, the plura that is the innermost one, the one that's around the lungs? Well, that's the visceral plura, V-I-S-C-E-R-A-L, and then plura, P-L-E-U-R-A. Now, what is the suffix that refers to chest? Well, the suffix that refers to chest is thorax, hyphen, T-H-O-R-A-X. Now, we also have a combining form that refers to chest. What is that? That's thoraco, T-H-O-R-A-C slash O. And what is the combining form that refers to a bronchus? Remember, bronchus is singular. Well, we have two options on that one also, right? Probably the more common one is bronco, B-R-O-N-C-H slash O, but you also could have said bronchio, B-R-O-N-C-H-I slash O. And what is the term for the space between the lungs where the heart and other structures are located? Well, that's the mediastinum, M-E-D-I-A-S-T-I-N-U-M. 
And finally, what is the term for a cavity within a bone that's lined with mucous membrane? Well, that's a sinus, S-I-N-U-S. And what is the word part? Well, that's sinus -o. pretty straightforward, S-I-N-U-S slash O. Okay, well, that covers the word parts and some of the trickier anatomical terms that are in the chapter. And next time, we'll go on and we'll start looking at pathologies. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast.